finally I've managed to get my hands on a Ford 1.8 TDCI diesel engine. These are the engines with the wet belt in the lower crankcase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we replace this wet belt. It's something I've been meaning to do for a long time and now I've got the opportunity, I'm doing it. Otherwise it's never going to happen. I know a lot of you have had your engines trashed because these belts have failed. So anyone who hasn't had this belt replaced or if you don't know and you own a Transit Connect or a Ford Mondeo, I would seriously look into it and have it replaced if it needs doing. Right then, with that said, we're going to move on over to the engine, over there, <laughs> and uh, we'll show you how we replace this wet belt then. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fit our timing tools onto our camshaft and our crankshaft. So using a 19mm socket and a bar, we're going to turn our engine over in a clockwise direction. As I turn crankshaft pulley, you'll see the camshaft level up with the level of the cylinder head, the slot that's in the back of this camshaft. Now our setting plate here is going to slide into the back of this slot, but just before it's level we're going to stop and we're going to put our timing pin in the crankshaft first. Just below the high pressure fuel pump, there's a little 10mm bolt in the engine block. This is a transit connect engine, so there would be a plate covering this bolt over which you'd have to remove. The alternator would have to be taken off as well. If this were a Mondeo, there would be a big bracket here with a hole in it, which is a bit of a pain to get to this bolt. It's a lot easier on the transit connect once you remove the bracket. So what we have to do now is remove this 10mm bolt and now we can fit our crankshaft locking pin and that will just screw all the way in until it's flush with a block like so. So back to our crankshaft sprocket and our 19mm socket, we can now turn the crankshaft until it butts up against the pin. Now assuming our timing was right to start with, our setting plate should now slide, this piece here should slide into the slot in the back of the camshaft, which it does. Hooray! So to remove the top cover, it's pretty damn self-explanatory really isn't it but I'll go through it anyway you've got one 10 mil and you've got one two three eight mil bolts so I'm going to whack all these out and off comes your cover if I were just replacing this top belt by itself I would just paint mark the sprockets the pump and the camshaft sprocket to the back casing. I wouldn't remove the top cover and I wouldn't fit the setting plate, you don't need to. I wouldn't fit the crankshaft pin, you don't need to. I'll just paint mark these two sprockets to the back plate, undo the tensioner, take the belt off and put a new belt on. And it'll go on in the same place and it'll be fine. But because we're changing the wet belt, we've got to take this belt off and we've got to take this pulley off. Now there's no timing marks on this pulley or the pump pulley really, well there is a time mark here but you don't really need to use it. So if you follow my instructions you won't go far wrong, everything is going to be alright. So first of all 15mm spanner on your top belt tensioner release your tensioner and you can take that right off. Now it's a 13mm bolt holding the camshaft sprocket on. It's not that tight so we'll crack that loose. Now, 
the sprockets or the taper, sort of. So we don't want to damage the sprocket getting it off. So use a block of wood and just hit it a few times and it will spring off. And that's our sprocket off. Now for our high pressure pump sprocket, you may well have to hold the crankshaft to stop it turning as you undo the bolts. Because they are a little bit on the tight side. And we'll take these three bolts right out. Now this sprocket has got a bit of sealant behind it and you find it won't just come off. Easiest way to get it off, just get a pry bar behind it and just give it a few jabs and that'll, that'll peel off. And there's some sealant on there and we'll put some new sealant on it when we put it back together. Now this silver plate around your high pressure pump is actually, you buy this as one piece, there's a gasket here, a seal, and it all comes with this plate as one whole piece. So we have to remove one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, seven, seven, ten mil bolts. So I'll get all these taken out now. This plate will just come clean off. Like so. And the back plates fell off as well. Now the water pump pulley has got to come off. And that's our water pump pulley out the way. Now this engine bracket also has to come off, but it's just four 10 mil bolts. So I'll whack these out of the way. It would be advisable to fit a new water pump. There's only a little row of 8mm bolts holding it on. You're going to make a right mess on the floor anyway. But it is worth changing the water pump while you're at this stage if you are going down this route doing all this work. I'm not going to change it because this is a scrap engine so I don't care. Right, I shall carry on. If there are any auxiliary belt guide pulleys kicking around on this casing they need to come off we need to undo our pump nut it's 21 mil and if you're in the car trying to do this it's easier just to put a pair of bolts like that and put a lever there just to hold it and it's not that tight, so that just crack loose. And you can remove that nut. Now your crankshaft pulley bolt, 19 millimeter uh, socket you're gonna need. I'm just gonna air gun this off. Now just one note here, we've still got the timing pin in the engine, but when I turn this with the air gun, it might turn the pulley anti-clockwise, but it won't hit the pin, it will just move. If I turn it clockwise, it will hit up against the pin, so there's no chance of us bending the pin by undoing it. So I'm just going to air gun this bolt out. Okay, and that will come out a little bit oily, and then that pulley should just slide straight out, like so. Now by undoing that pulley bolt, it has turned the crankshaft away from the timing pin. Not to worry, when we put the new belt in place, we'll set the timing up again, so it doesn't matter that it's out of place at the moment. Now before we remove the timing casing, we're gonna take the tensioner out, the belt tensioner, which is here, with this nut. So it's 17 mil.
and that will just wind straight out. You see, we'll know, we know that this is a belt because it's got the flat, the flat end. If it was a chain, it would have a domed end. Now all we have to do is unbolt the casing. There's a whole row of 8mm bolts, but there's one 10mm bolt just below the water pump. There's a load of bolts with studs coming out of them around where the, the pump sits. As long as you remember where all the bolts go. So what I'll do now, I'll get all these bolts out and then we'll get this casing off. So now with all our bolts out, all you need to do is just give it a quick prise and it should come away. There will be some oil spillage. As you can see. And we'll just pull that casing out of the way. And there we are, one wet belt. Now, there are two Torx 40 screws here we have to remove. I've already actually loosened these. Now the pump sprocket is tight on the pump shaft. Because we're not gonna be reusing this old wet belt or this sprocket, because you get, a, you get a new sprocket with the belt kit. It doesn't matter if we damage this. So give it a few taps of the hammer and it should release. That's it. That's now broke free of its taper. That's all loose. You could use a block of wood if you were going to use this again. But it's very doubtful you would be. Okay, this bottom sprocket might just need a little bit of a prize of a lever. It. Now I'll attempt to try and lift the whole lot out. There we go. I'll put this on the bench. And there we have it, one wet belt. Now there's just one thing to note here. If this was a new wet belt kit, there is a mark on the pump sprocket and a similar mark on the crank sprocket. And the belt would have a line across it, which would line up with these marks. So if it did fall to pieces, you would know exactly where to put the belt in relation to both sprockets. So you can't go wrong. Now, I don't have a chain kit to fit in this engine. To show you. So I'm going to have to kind of improvise here but there isn't a lot of difference between the wet belt kit and the chain kit apart from the fact that with, if this was a chain you'd buy it from a Ford dealer and it would come just like this all built up as one unit but this little hub here you would fit inside the pump end of the sprocket and because the bolts are all offset it will only fit inside that pump sprocket in one position so you can't get it wrong and then these little bolts will go through their chain sprocket and into the hub and all that hub allows you to do is this is the part that's going to fit onto your high pressure pump shaft Okay, now I'm going to refit this whole wet belt assembly to show you how it goes back together. But just take note of this crankshaft sprocket. There's a little cutout and there's a little hole. There is a pin on the crankshaft. The pin on the crankshaft goes into the hole. So whatever you do, don't align the pin with this. It won't work, it'll crash your engine. 
<laughs> so make sure the pin on the crankshaft definitely goes into this hole here. Now your timing cover casing contains your oil pump which is just here. It's perfectly fine. We'll align these back up with our crankshaft because this slides over your crankshaft. These oil pump locators in here. So we'll align them up when we put this casing back on. And you'll have to fit a new one of these metal gaskets. It's got a rib around this gasket. And they only crush up once. So once they're crushed, you can't use them again because they'll probably leak after that. So always fit a new one of these gaskets. So the first thing we're going to do with this casing is I'm going to knock the oil seal out. And that's uh, our oil seal out there. Now obviously you would clean up your casing and get all the oil and dirt around, get it all cleaned up nicely. I shan't bother because like I said this is a dud engine so I'm not going to do any more than I really have to here. Okay, I have strategically placed a rubber band around this as it would come new with a rubber band to keep it all together. So all we've got to do is slot it all on and make sure our pin here locates with the hole in our crank sprocket. And just make doubly sure that the crank sprocket is located properly. At this point you can now cut your rubber band off, get that out of the way, and fit your two torque screws. Make sure they're both bolted down nice and tight. <coughs> At this point you can, if you want to, get some grips on that sprocket and turn it clockwise just so it butts up against the timing pin we're turning the crankshaft now and we're now butted up against the timing pin that's through the side of the block I will refit the nut on our pump sprocket after I've fitted the casing but just as a note of interest the high pressure pump does not have to be timed up. So it doesn't matter what position the high pressure pump centre shaft sits in. As long as the belt is on the sprockets, the pump and crank sprockets in the correct position. Don't worry about what position this shaft sits in, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we just put our casing back on. Refit all your bolts all the way around the casing but do not tighten any of them up because we're going to fit our timing casing alignment tool in here in a minute and we don't want any of these bolts tight so we can shuffle the casing around to get it in the right position. Now our timing casing alignment tool here is pretty straightforward. It just slots into the crankshaft. That fits in there. And that's it. All the, all the bolts around this casing are finger tight. So they're all pretty loose still. Now we get that in, and that's centralised. What I would suggest is nip a couple of the bolts up, just a couple, and then remove the tool, because I have had the tool get stuck in here before. Now our casing is lined up, I would bolt all the way around and I would go round about three or four times to make sure all the bolts are nice and tight evenly. I'm going to put the nut back onto our pump sprocket and just leave that finger tight for the minute. And I'll leave the socket on it so I don't forget to tighten it. 
I'm now going to put our tensioner back into position. Now this tensioner's got a flat end because it's a wet belt. If we were fitting a chain, this end here would be domed. Okay, so a domed end for a chain and a flat end for a wet belt. And once that tension is back in, we can fully tighten that up. And now to, <coughs> to tighten our pump nut up, stick a couple of bolts in there, put your socket on, put a bar in there, and you can just tighten it up, just pretty tight. That's it, done. And obviously you would fit a brand spanking new oil seal on your crankshaft, front crank oil seal. I'm fitting a used one, but I'll really put a new one in it because they're, they're, they're not very good seals and they, they can leak if they're once they're taken out. So if you've got any kind of tool to get this in flush, I just uh, tap them in flush with a casing. I've never had a problem. Now because you've just fitted a brand new crank seal, when it comes to putting the pulley back on, guide the pulley in nice and carefully and try and keep it as square as possible as you're sliding it in. Because you wouldn't want to damage the new seal. Now, what I would say at the moment is just nip it up, just gently, not too much. And we can now turn the pulley back and forward. And if you can hear that, that's it butting up against the timing pin. Okay? So we, know, we now know we're on the timing pin. Right, what I'll do now, I'll take the timing pin out because I'm now going to tighten up the crankshaft pulley. Now I just gun these bolts up nice and tight with an air gun. If you wanted to get a crankshaft or flywheel locking tool and lock the flywheel and uh, tighten it with a torque wrench, that's up to you. But I mean, the amount I've done, hundreds of them, I've always gunned them up nice and tight with an air gun. I've never had one come loose. That's it, done. But now I need the timing pin back in the engine so we can set the camshaft up in a bit. So I'm gonna turn this a little bit anti-clockwise. I'm gonna refit our crank timing pin and actually go in there fully, nice and splush, screw it, screws in. Now I'm going to turn the crankshaft until it butts up against the pin again, clockwise. That's it. So we're now firmly up against our timing pin. So now with the timing case all totally bol bolted up, crankshaft pulley is bolted up, we shall stick our water pump pulley back on and now we can put our engine bracket back on and just make sure that all your water pump bolts and your engine bracket bolts are all bolted up properly so now we'll put our back plate back into position, just slot on, and there's one little 8mm bolt, so with our back plate now in position, 
we're going to fit our new seal. Now a brand new one would come with a sleeve in here so you can slide the seal straight over the injection pump sprocket without damaging the lip on the seal. Obviously this is a second hand seal so I'm just going to put it on any old hell. And then you're going to refit all your 10 mil nuts and tighten them all down. And just make sure your 8 mil nut is tight holding your back plate onto your head. Okay, the injection pump sprocket that we're now putting on, you're going to clean up all around the surfaces in here and we're going to put sealant around here. Okay, just a bead of sealant inside that pulley like that. Now this pulley is only going to fit onto this pump sprocket in one position. As you see the bolts are all offset. And there is a mark on it, a little circle there, which will line up with a little mark on our pump sprocket as well. And you can bolt all these three up nice and tight now. So we'll slide our cam camshaft sprocket back on, but don't tighten the nut. We'll leave that just finger tight for the minute. The same with your tensioner, we'll just screw that in. Then we'll just leave that tensioner finger tight as well. Now obviously this is a used belt, but if you had a new belt, if there are any arrows, you would do that belt so the arrows are, are facing clockwise, the direction of the engine turns in. So I'm going to slide the belt on. Like so. At this point, make sure the crankshaft sprocket is definitely butted up against the timing pin and that your setting bar is in the back of your camshaft. We turn that anti-clockwise until the pointer lines up in the middle of the slot here. Okay, now we can bolt that down. And that's fully tightened and that's our belt tensioned up. And now at this point I'm now going to use my 13mm socket and I'm going to just going to tighten down the camshaft sprocket bolt. Note I'm using the setting plate in the back to hold the camshaft while I'm tightening it up. Probably not the best idea in the world but it's the way I've always done it, as long as you don't stupidly over tighten it because you haven't got to go mad, you're probably best getting a torque wrench. I will leave the torque wrench settings in the description below for the uh, camshaft sprocket and the crankshaft sprocket. Right, so that's that bolt it up. So now we're going to remove our crankshaft locking pin and our camshaft setting plate. Right, at this point I'm now going to rotate the crankshaft to full revolutions, okay? And then we're going to put our timing pins back in and see if everything lines up properly.
Right, so just before we've done complete two revolutions, I'm going to now insert our timing pin back into the engine block. And I'm going to turn the crankshaft until the crankshaft butts up against our, our crankshaft timing pin. And that's it. We are now locked on the crank timing pin. Now our camshaft setting plate slots into the back of this camshaft as it does perfectly of course that's it our timing we know now is perfectly timed up okay at this point we can now remove our camshaft setting plate and remove our crankshaft timing pin for the last time and the little blanking bolt that goes into our engine block We'll fit that back in and tighten that down. And before we put our top belt cover back on, just make sure that the uh, now we've rotated the engine round two revolutions, that our top belt tensioner tab is in the middle of our cutout. Everything looks good here now. We can now fit our cover back on. And that's it. That's the bulk of the work done. So all you've really got left is to fit your rocker cover, your studs for your engine mount, and all the ancillaries, power steering pump, auxiliary belt, alternator, bits and pieces that you would have taken off to get to this point. That's it, we're done. I hope this helps somebody out there. In the meantime, if you have any questions, if you think I haven't done anything quite right, leave a comment down below and I'm sure to get back to you. So anyway, that's it. That's me, Alan, signing out. Till the next time. Adios.